Hey guys, you welcome to my YouTube channel. Thanks for coming back again. If you are a subscriber of this channel and if you are yet to subscribe, just click on the subscribe button and also the bell beside it to notify you when we drop our new video. Okay, um, we are going to look at the YF2023 chemistry practical titration in this video and we are going to explain it explicitly. So, let us take a look at the question we have for uh, the upcoming example. Actually, it is not the exact question, so we are just creating possible questions that might come your way and how you can uh, probably solve them and uh, in practical and get your high mark in chemistry practical. Okay, there is an exceptional or let's say um, a, a little change in this practical and what is the change? The reaction is actually between an hydrated salt, which is a weak base, and a strong acid, which is HCl. So, the best indicator for this type of reaction is methyl orange indicator. That is the most suitable indicator for this reaction. But in this video, I'm going to be using phenolphthalein indicator. However, when you are performing your own practical over the endeavor to use methyl orange indicator. So, I'm saying this add so we can get the information right and know that, okay, the best indicator is what? Is methyl orange. Meanwhile, phenolphthalein is only used in this video because of inavailability of methyl orange. And this might have a slight change in the practical, but anyway, let's gather the knowledge as it is, but the change might not be too much. So now let's look at the question we're talking about. We have solution A containing 0.1 mole per dm cube of HCl. Then B is a solution of Na2CO3 dot XH2O. So which implies that we don't know the how many moles, the number of moles of water of crystallization present in this salt. But the concentration of this salt which was given to us, that is the mass concentration, is what? 5.0 gram per dm cube of B. So now, we are told to put A into the bread and titrate against 20 or 25 centimeter cube of B. And the 20 or 25 centimeter cube is the volume of your pipette. So in a nutshell, we are using methyl orange indicator. I've said something about this. I'm going to be using phenolphthalein in this video. Now, we are told to repeat the titration to obtain value, consistent value of titration. We are repeating the titration to obtain consistent value. So we are doing the titration three times, like I've drawn the table already. One, two, three, that is first, second, and third titer. Now, then we are told to tabulate our reading. Already I've made the table for that. So after every titration, I will record my values in the table. So then, recording the table, I will show you how to do that. So now this is the equation of the reaction where we have Na2CO3 dot XH2O plus 2HCl going into 2NaCl plus CO2 plus X plus 1 H2O. So now from your result, from the result of the experiment and the average volume of titer, because even after tabulating your reading, we are meant to calculate the average volume of titer according to the question. So then thereafter, we look for the concentration of B in mole per dm cube. We look for the concentration of B in gram per dm cube, of which is already in the question, so we don't need that. Okay, let me asterisk that. We don't need to do this. It's given to us in the question already. It's given to us already in the question concentration of B in gram per dm cube, so we don't actually need to calculate that anymore. So now, molar mass of Na2CO3 dot XH2O. So after determining the molar mass of the what hydrated salt. It will not be easier for us to know the value of x. So then after finding the value of x, then it will be also be easier to determine the percentage water of crystallization in the salt. So now, I'm going to bring the camera close to the practical now. We're going to show how it is done and how we get our table from the values of the bread. Okay, keep watching. So, now we want to start the experiment. We can see the um, solution B in the standard flask. As you can see, it, we have solution A also in the standard flask. So I'm putting them into the respective beaker where I'm going to use them. So this is the phenolphthalein indicator I'm using. 
so I'm putting A into this big canal okay let's see about 150 centimeter cubes okay and I may not finish that because the titration is just three so now I will add the B into the B car as well okay then I don't need this standard flat any longer so then thereafter this is my funnel that I will use to fill solution A into the burette so while filling I'll take this away now don't forget the normal routine and procedures rinse this pipette that you're going to use to draw your base with the solution is meant to what contain then use this bread rinse it with hey the solution is meant to contain and at the same time you have to rinse this conical flask with water in order not to contain excess of the b solution b so then make sure whenever you are filling your burette you remove the burette after you remove the uh, funnel after the burette has been completely filled so that it will not keep topping up your uh, burette as you titrate so those are the normal routines and precautions you need to put in place when you are doing this titrometric analysis so that you can get at least accurate results so in a nutshell let's start so let us refill the burette now Let's refill the burette. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, I've placed the funnel over there on the burette so to refill it. So that's what I'm going to do right away. So refilling the burette, I take my solution A and then add to the burette. Okay. Then adjust the burret to zero if the solution has gone beyond that. Uh, and make sure whenever you are adjusting the burret, concentrate on the lower meniscus. So once the lower meniscus touch the calibrated side of zero, then the solution has been set completely. So I fill the burret. Then the next thing is I've rinsed this with water already. So then I will pipette the solution B into heat using the pipette. So I'm going to swap the pipette now to the mark point. So let's look at how that is done. So I have emptied the content of the conical of the pipe pipette into the conical flask. And mind you, the resulting solution do not blow it because this pipette is designed to discharge exact 25 centimeter cube. So by blowing the excess solution here, you have increased the volume from 25 upward. So now, then the next thing is for me to add my indicator, which is methyl orange. Uh, sorry, phenolphthalein here, and the best should be methyl orange. So then I'm adding that here now. So as you can see, the color is pink in basic medium. Phenolphthalein color is pink in basic medium. So now let's titrate and see what the color changes to. And let's note the initial reading of. Now I've set the bullet to zero. So the initial reading is zero. So at the end of the titration, my final reading, I will take note of that. Then subtract the two to get the volume of A, which is used. So now let's move on to the titration so let's start I'm releasing that in a very small amount so that this is the first one I'll be able to get a value that will lead me through the second titration so that is why I'm doing this Okay. Wow. 
the color has actually changed to colorless. Let's look at it very well. So it's no more pink, no more pink. So it is now colorless. Okay, let's use a proper light, so a white light, so that we can see the colorless very well. So it is colorless now, and the end point is 9.0. 9.0 so this is the the final volume used 9.0 so then we move to the second titration so i don't need to refill the bullets back to zero i can actually start from 9.0 so that i can get the second value so which means i don't need to refill the bullets at any case because the first value is 9 so which means i can still see 9 times 3 uh, even if I want to do more than three titrations, I can still see nine times four in the solution. So let's look at that. The second titration, I'm going to empty this. Then I'll solve the pipette again to get the second solution, 25 centimeter cube. So this is the second value. So let us um, titrate now. Okay. Okay, it has not completely changed. Okay, just a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, we've gotten the colorless solution. So the value is 18.10. So let the values be in two decimal places. 18.10. So that is the value. Let's go for the third one. Okay, let us look at the third third value. So let's move on. Okay, the color has changed again. Yeah. Now, so we have twenty-seven point two here. Twenty-seven point two. So now let's go to the table to see more work that is left to be done. So let's look at the average volume. This is our table now. You can see initial reading should be 0, 0.00, final reading is 9.00. So if you subtract that, you get 9.00. So now take a look at the other titration. You have what? 9.00, which is the final value here, will be your initial value here. So then after the second titration, we got 18.10, which when you subtract, give you 9.1. Zero. Then, which I'm using a single bullet containing 50 centimeter cube because uh, I can see nine in three places. Let us assume the first value is like uh, 12. So by the time I do, I can even see 12 three times. So if it is more than 12, uh, let's say 15, I can see 15 three times as well. If it is 20, I cannot see 23 times. So which means after two titrations, I will have to refill the bullet to get the third titration. Title. So we can go now to calculate the average volume of acid use, that is VA, which is now 9.00 plus 9.10 plus 9.10, all divided by 3. So this value gives us 9.06667. So let us approximate this to what? 9.067. I actually want to use that in three decimal places, or let's use it in two decimal place or probably we can use 9.1 so let's use this this is approximately 9.1 but let's use it 9.067 centimeter cube so this is the average volume or title value 
So now, after calculating that according to the question, the next thing is we have to calculate the concentration of B in mole per dm cube. So how do we determine the concentration of B in mole per dm cube? This is question I, B, I, 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 right I, I, I. So now let's look at question I, B, which asks us to determine the concentration of B in mole per dm cube. So using CA multiplied by VA over CB multiplied by VB equals to NA over NB. So according to the equation, the value of NA, which is the concentration of the, uh, the number of moles of the acid is 2, and the value of NB is what? Is 1. So now let's use that in the calculation where CA is the concentration of the acid given to us in the question here, which is 0 0.1. So how we have 0 0.1 multiplied by the VA, which we have gotten now, 9.067, all over CB, which is what we are looking for, the concentration of, C, uh, of B in more value Q, multiplied by VB, which is volume of the five pairs. Look at the information written, the indicator used to be written up there, and the volume of five pairs should also be written. So the volume of five pairs is 25. 25. So in a nutshell, NA gives us 2, and NB is 1. So then we do this calculation. So by doing this calculation, I'll be having, so that gives me, let me continue here. I'll move the camera closer so we can get so here I'm going to be having 0 0.9067 over 25 CB equals 2 over 1. So that would be 50 CB equals 0 0.9067. So with me CB will be 0 0.9067 over 50. 0.0181. That is in mole. Per dm cube. That is the concentration of B in mole per dm cube. So let me bring the camera closer for you to see that calculation. So as you can see, that we have the concentration of B to be 0 0.0181. So and that is mole per dm cube, and this is the calculation. So now, what next? Well, are we asked to calculate from the question? We are told to determine the molar mass of B. That's molar mass of the salt used. So how do we go about that? So now, let's continue the calculation. The other question says concentration of B in gram per dm cube and that has been given to us in the question. So now, we are to mark, find the molar mass of this. So how do we find the molar mass of this salt? So we don't know the molar mass. So let's make it uh, molarity, which is the molar concentration Cb, is equal to mass concentration all over molar mass so by knowing this it is easy for me so the molarity is the 0 0.0181 we have gotten so 0 0.0181 that is the molarity of the base cb and then the mass concentration of the base given is 5 so we have 5 all over the molar mass which we don't know is m dot m so now let's determine it so in a nutshell if I'm going to do this, I will have m dot m multiplied by 0 0.0181 equals 5. So which means the molar mass of the salt is going to be what? 5 divided by 0 0.0181. So by doing this, what will I have? So this value gives us for the molar mass to be 276, approximately 276. 6 gram per mole. Okay, sweet. Good. So now, how do we now determine the value of x from the molar mass? So that's just it. So to determine the value of x according to the question, we are told to find the value of x according to the question. So how do we go about that? So we know that the molar mass consists of mass of Na2CO3 plus x multiplied by mass of water h2o we know that so which means 276 will be equals to the mass of any 2 co3 is 106 how do we get that 2 times 23 plus 12 
plus 3 times 48. 3 times 16, rather. Then we have plus mass of water is 18 grams. So mass of one mole of water. So we have 2 times 1 plus 16. So that will be 18x. 18 18x. 18 so now, if we are to solve this out, I will be having 276 minus 106 equals 18x. So by the time we make that calculation, what are we going to get? Um, 276 minus 106. So that gives us 170 equals 18x. So at the end of the day, let's divide both sides by 18 and see what we get. So let's divide both sides by 18. 18 this goes with this, so x will be 170 over 18. So I have 9.4449 or like that, like that, like that. So uh, actually this value I would have approximated it to 10 to get the water of crystallization to get the uh, how many mole of water of crystallization is present I would have approximated it to 10 but the value of 4 year is not meant to be available so we can approximate this to 9 9 but have I ever seen um, a salt of sodium transcarbonate with 9 mole of water of crystallization? No, so I've actually seen 10. So probably this question might be 10 is 2 or 10 is 2 or might be involved. So actually, I can use 10 is 2 or 9, whichever one we need to use. So according to my calculation, I got 9. So if it is 9.5, I would have approximated 10. So what do we do? Let's take 9 or 10. All right, I'll use 10. Good because I've always come across sodium transcarbonate decahydrate. So I've never come across sodium transcarbonate non hydrate. So let us use 10. Well, by our calculation, we have 9. So when you perform the experiment on your own side, you might actually get 10. So let's look at how to determine the percentage water of crystallization. So I'll go by rubbing this side. For the calculation. So if I want to get the percentage water of crystallization, if the salt is actually Na2CO3 dot 10H2O, or by our calculation that we have Na2CO3 dot 9H2O, okay. We can determine that so we should know all the mass here so actually na2co3.10h2o the molar mass will give us 286 grams per mole so and if i look at the number of moles of water present is 10 so that will be 10 times 18 so i'll be having 18 times 10 which is 180 over the total mass which is what 286 then i'll multiply that by 100 give me percentage water of crystallization so of which that will give me 62.94 percent so which means 62.94 percent water of crystallization is present as you can see there so but if i use my nine so what will now be my Percentage water of crystallization. If I use my 9, so how will that be? So if I use my 9, it's going to be what? 9 times 18, rather. So that is 162. All over the total mass will not be 286. It's going to be what? Uh, 162 plus 106. So that's 268. So then I'll multiply that by 100. I'll be having 60.45% water of crystallization. So if I use my nine, this will be the percentage water of crystallization. If I use 10, which is the general available one that I have come across, we are getting the water of crystallization, percentage water of crystallization is what? 62.94. Okay, thanks for watching this video.
please click on the subscribe button and they want to come for other classes math physics chemistry biology engineering courses are treated on this channel and make sure you share this channel to every other person that it might be useful for thank you thanks for watching